decided to tackle the floors, the floor, the floors. Um, a lot of you guys are going to be like kind of dumbfounded at the fact that I didn't bead roll it. So uh, I got to say, you know, I, I wanted to bead roll it. And I, I know that you're supposed to. I know that, you know, it's kind of ridiculous that I didn't. But my, you know, obsessive compulsiveness <laughs> got in the way of being patient. And I know when you're building a car, you got to be patient because so much goes into it. It's not something that can happen overnight. But, you know, every day I'm spending like $100 here, $300 there, $200 there. I mean, it's it's insane how much money goes into this. And I couldn't get a hold of my buddy that had the bead roller to borrow it. I tried on a couple different occasions and he's very very busy so i i just I, I thought about buying one and i was like you know do i really want to spend 300 dollars on one i could have got like a real tiny one but i don't think it was big enough to do some of the bigger pieces so i just i just went for it man and the, the floor that was in this car wasn't bead rolled either the the original one that i cut out uh, if you look back you'll notice it, it was just slapped together but I'm not just going to slap this together. I'm going to do it the best way possible, you know, this, as strong as it can be. There's no doubt that it's going to be strong, but it's just going to vibrate and be really annoying when I'm driving down the road, I'm sure. But hopefully enough Dynamat will calm some of that down. But all right, let's get into this. So I started with, with the uh, back floor, the rear floor panels. Um, I'm still undecided about what I want to do as far as a back seat. I kind of decided that I wasn't going to put one in at all. I, I'm thinking about just doing a front and passenger seat, but I, I'm still kind of flirting with the idea of, you know, maybe putting it in, but that would change up the whole idea of how I'm going to go about doing the rear seat panels, if that's what you call them. I don't know, but the, but the, the, the four foot piece, the four foot strip of sheet metal that's going to go along the back i could just tack that down i could weld it down and i could be done with it and then but if i'm going to do back seats i have to go about it a little bit differently which still won't take very much time it's going to be fairly simple but i don't know yet so i just wanted to get the main floor done for now i wanted to get the back the back done and the front uh, and part of the tunnel now I, you know, I went off of the bracing that I already had, you know, that I, that you guys have already seen. I add more bracing in this video, which you'll see in a few minutes, but, um, it's, it's just self-explanatory. You know, I'm not, I've never done this before. And, but like, I, I just think of it as if I was building something out of wood, you know, being a woodworker, if I was going to build a frame, uh, I see how I'm using the crowbar to push down on the sheet metal. That's key. Uh, I learned that from watching Bad Chad do it. He has one that's like custom made that goes into his armpit. And like, it's so key to do that because you have to hold the sheet metal down tight. And the key is to wait until it stops glowing before you take the pressure off or else it'll just pop right back up. Because this heat warps or, or this sheet metal warps as you're welding it. So you don't want to learn that the hard way or else you'll be grinding them all back off. And it's, it's, I, I didn't have to, luckily, because I, I knew to do this, but some people don't. But anyway, I went about this in a way where I would go about it as if I was building a wooden frame. If, if I was building this out of wood, how would I do it to be structurally sound? It's just kind of common sense. You know, you got to have bracing. You know, I, I decided to put bracing every 12 inches. You know, kind of like studs in a wall, but studs are 16 inches. So these, which I'm not a... I don't do construction. I build furniture, but I, I just use that as an example. You know, I, I figured I'd go 12 inches apart. And then as you'll see in a couple moments, I, I add more, but I use the uh, poster board, you know, to kind of get an idea. Uh, the poster board, I folded it so that it was 24 by 24 inches. The sheet metal that I have is 48 by 24. So I just marked up from the, from the rear brace 24 inches 
and I cut a general cut and then I just added tape to make the, the uh, measurement a little tighter to make the angle better. I was off by like an eighth of an inch once I pushed it up tight. So I just filled it in with tape to get like an exact, you know, template. And it was just, it was just really easy to do. Now my braces that I have running parallel to the drive shaft, uh, they are 23 inches apart from the inner rocker panel, you know, that I put on our, you know, square tubing, in other words. So I allowed, you know, an inch of playing room, you know, for the, you know, like a half inch on each side for the sheet metal to overlap. So that's kind of how I did that. And obviously this is just tracing and it, it works out. Although <laughs> It did work out. The angle worked out great, but I didn't take into consideration that it's it's kind of hard to explain. But I had I I originally thought that I was going to run the sheet metal on top of the rear brace that sits up an inch and a half higher than the other braces, and then I realized that that can't work that way because it would sit up an inch and a half higher than everything else, and it'd be at a downward slope. Uh, so. I ended up having to cut this, I think two more times after this, just to get it like closer and closer until it fit perfectly, which, you know, took an extra seven minutes of my time. So it wasn't, wasn't that bad. And, you know, I wasn't expecting everything to go perfectly smoothly when you're welding in an entire floor of a car, you know, you're going to run into a couple of hiccups, but for the most part, everything went surprisingly smooth for never have never doing this before I, I thought that I don't know I, I was pretty confident going into it because you know, I know I keep name dropping them but uh watching bad Chad do his it, it, it gave me the extra confidence to just go ahead with this or else I probably would have never thought that I could do it but watching him do a floor in about three hours of a, like three episodes that were an hour long each I was just like wow that's all there is to it I mean that's that's kind of kind of, you know, that's a no-brainer. I'm, I'm just going to do it. Like, I, I know how to weld now. I'm just going to go out and do it. So, yeah, as you can see, it's it's a little long, but you'll see where my where my right hand is in the back. It overlaps that back bar. And so I had to... Uh, I, had to I had to cut it, but I, I don't show the <laughs> myself cutting it three more times. All I did was just measure the difference from the back and then bring the poster board down on it, you know, the two inches. But first, I had to add these braces, you know, at a downward slant, you know, and uh, that's, you know, I, I seeing it is better than me trying to describe it. So that's how I went about it to keep it flush on, you know, the top of the tubes. And then you just have that little bit of a slant back there, which is which is fine. And when I mount the seats, and I'm just going to mount a you know a bracket in the front, you know, like to make up the difference, uh, an inch and a half, you know, piece of steel tubing, which I have plenty of scrap, so that'll that'll be fine. And by the way, guys, my my welds are getting a lot a lot nicer, uh, like on these on this bracing. You know, I'm getting like solid, solid uh, line, you know, solid weld beads, you know. Um, it's just getting like the longer, the longer I do it, like the more it just becomes like, you know, I don't know what you'd call it, like muscle memory, maybe like, like you just, you just go into it and you just do it. Like, I'm not afraid. I'm not, you know, first when I started welding, I was like, all, you know kind of nervous I didn't I didn't trust my welds yet I didn't know if I was burning them in hot enough there, I had so many different questions and it was a lot of trial and error but now that I kind of know what I'm doing in a sense I still don't know what I'm doing it takes years to perfect this stuff but I uh I'm a lot more comfortable with it put it that way and, and I'm enjoying it you know just as much I, I just 
the more I get better at it, the more I just want to, you know, the more I want to take on and try more. Yeah, I just went with a little thinner stock because that rear stock that goes the whole way across, the, I wanted that to be obviously thicker and, you know, it has a, a lot more structure to, you know, hold up. So this this is just a 23-inch long piece, you know, so I just used inch by inch uh, square stock. I mean, that's plenty, plenty uh, strong enough. So as you can see, like, they're not perfect, but they're just, you know, they're, they're getting, they're getting better. <laughs> better than they were, you know, a month ago. Before I was just kind of tacking things in. I didn't try to do like solid welds, like, like running a bead. I was just like, tack, 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 you know, until I went the whole way across. Now I'm just running beads and certain things. And others like with the with the sheet metal, I'm I'm not running beads. Obviously, I'm tacking it in every like inch and a half or so. And then I just measure, as you can see, I'm I'm going 12 inches down. I don't need a marker or anything. I just I make a little scratch with my roller, and uh, I just know where it needs to be. And it, and this doesn't need to be. This isn't like a like a, a math project here. I'm not being, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm being particular about the strength and the durability of it, but if it's like a 16th of an inch off, it's not going to make, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever because all I do once I put the sheet metal on, which you'll see in a little bit is I just mark the center of the tubing and I make my straight line down and then I, I know where to weld. So it doesn't matter if this is off a, a tad bit or anything like that. I'm mainly speaking for people who have never done this before. Those of you who who do this regularly, like you're you're probably laughing at me, <laughs> like I'm explaining everything like a like I'm talking to a two year old. Like you guys already know. I'm just, I guess, trying to for anyone who hasn't done this before and is like afraid to do it or is kind of on the fence about it. Like, just go for it, man. But bead roll your sheet metal. You know, don't do what I did. Like, I, I, I had it all planned out. I was going to bead roll my, my sheet metal, and I was going to do a whole video on that. And I really wanted to do this right. But, you know, I had the I had the free day to come out here and do this. And, well, I had two free days, actually. But a lot went on in those two days. I got interrupted a lot, and I ran into a lot of problems not with the floor itself but with other things so i got pulled away a lot but i did this over a two-day period but as far as like actual working like work time on it i probably have about three and a half hours of work time and on doing this floor and i've never done it before so i i'm pretty sure like anybody can do this as, as long as you have a general idea of you know how to read a tape measure and you know how to use a welder i think you're you're fine and you have to have common sense, which I know a lot of people don't have common sense, but just think of it as like, do you want to fall through the floor or, 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 or how are you going to make your ass not fall through the sheet metal? You know, like it's got to be structurally sound. It's pretty simple. But what started this project off that was frustrating, but it was a, it was, a, it was an honest accident was I was going to do this over the weekend and I went and got welding gas uh my i went and got my juice and, and i got home and it was empty and by the time i got home it, it was a friday evening and then it was closed and they're closed all weekend so i could, and it wasn't obviously it was you know a mistake they they deal with hundreds of bottles and it just so happened that mine was empty when i got back and i didn't want it to seem like i was like 
trying to rip them off, you know, by saying, I got an empty bottle and I use it because, you know, two days had passed. But it, it did ruin my weekend, so I was I was kind of mad about it, you know. But I couldn't be mad at them. It, but but it was a waste of my weekend, and I had it in my head that I was going to do this project. And then Monday came along, and I got I got my welding juice, and I I got back here, and I I started. I laid down about you know three welds, and and then I realized that my spool was empty, so I had to go get more of that and uh turned right back around and went back and then you know a relative was in the hospital and so i i had to there, there was a lot going on i had to keep stopping and going and you know life happens that's just the way it is you know you can't get discouraged but uh, ultimately i got it done and it's not done yet i still have to do there's a little more to it but yeah see there's there's my line and it's it's a uh, just drill drill holes in there but uh and i also do that along the other edge as well but you'll see that in a couple minutes but uh yeah there were all kinds of like hiccups like i i have children and everything so obviously like they need to get picked up from school they have extracurricular activities after school there's there's a ton going on here you know so i have to just like sneak out here every chance I get and uh in between working and everything else but the uh the crazy thing is is like this like I said it it didn't take very long so it, it really wasn't it wasn't the end of the world that I ran into some hiccups I always expect to anyway like I never expect anything to go perfectly because you know when you do that then you're you're usually left disappointed <laughs> so got to expect some uh some problems here and there especially when you're building a car from scratch with no experience i didn't know how long it was going to take i figured it was going to take me like all week coming out here and picking at it a couple hours a day and uh i was surprised even though i i watched the process with uh bad chad doing it and he he flew right through it but he's also like he does this like it's like his life you know and he he's very good at what he does he has years of experience and but no matter how much experience you have like if you're doing the same thing it's really it's just cutting and cutting and welding so i i got it done pretty much in the same amount of time as as he as he as his episodes ran so although he did do a lot more than i did you know he he went a little above and beyond welding four sh pieces of sheet metal and, and a few brackets <laughs> braces now here's another thing too like these this will lift up on you when you're going down in these screw holes and these you know it, it's because it beads up but you got to kind of you got to hold it down with your hand as you go it, it ended up working out real nice floor is really really solid and uh i'm really happy with it outside of you know i'm going to be haunted forever for not bead rolling and i'm going to be i know i should have and i'll probably say it five more times in this video uh because you know i'm one of those people that like if you're going to do it do it right and, and i i went through the trouble of doing all this and i got it in here perfectly like it should just be bead rolled but i don't know the old one wasn't I don't plan on having people in the back seat. I don't I don't plan on you know this is going to be a loud noisy driver. I'm not I'm not going to be in here listening to you know classical piano music trying to take a nap on the way to work like this like this isn't a Tesla. This is <laughs> this is going to be a loud annoying obnoxious hot rod and uh, it's kind of it's all right if it vibrates around a little bit. I think I think I can live with it. It's not really I know that it, it helps with structural integrity as well, having it bead rolled. Obviously, it makes it like twice the strength, but uh, with all this bracing in here and everything, I, I think it's going to be just fine. I, I think if I if this thing gets wrecked, I don't know if the bead rolling in the floor is going to necessarily save my life compared to the way it is right now. now I could be wrong, but... Uh, I'll take I'm gonna take my chances the two times a month I take this out you know 
or two times a year maybe <laughs> if it ever gets done but speaking of that I've been kind of slow on getting the transmission rebuilt that's that's where I'm at it was a beautiful night by the way I just ha- had to step out and breathe a little bit and uh, really enjoying the these fall nights man but uh that's where I got at the end of that night but uh yeah so where I'm at with the with with the transmission and everything I the engine's done as you guys know I, I just don't have it here yet because I, I got to get the transmission done and get a torque converter I bought a transmission it needs to be uh, rebuilt it has a shift kit in it and everything but it sat in a garage for you know 12 to 15 years something like that and it, it there's nothing it's not locked up right like I don't I just don't want to take the chance of hooking up this old transmission to a brand new engine, a brand new torque converter, you know, and brand new rear end and everything. I, I don't, I might as well get it rebuilt and get it refurbished so that everything's brand new. I mean, but it's like 800 bucks or something like that. Plus the torque converter is going to be another, I'm going to have about 1400 bucks or 1200 bucks wrapped up in the transmission and torque converter which is fine it's expected obviously and i'm almost ready to do that but i just i'm wrapping this this stuff up first because this stuff nickel and dimes me daily like just making the trip to go get gas every day for the welder and it's not every day but it's like maybe once a week or twice a week and then you know get i, I just bought all new uh which I'll show you in the next episode, but I just bought all new, you know, grade eight bolts for the body mounts. I have to drill up through the floor and uh, just stupid stuff. It's not expensive, but like, it, all, I, I end up spending, like I said, like hundreds of dollars a, a week somehow you know, on little stuff, you know, and, and I didn't want to drop $1,400 or $1,600 on, on the transmission and torque converter yet if I'm not ready for it. Um, it's there. I have it. It just needs rebuilt, and I'll send it, send it out when it, when I'm ready to roll. And I will not be attempting that one myself. Uh, I could, I've watched videos. I thought about it. I'm not going to rebuild my transmission. I'm just going to, going to have a professional do it. Yeah, I'm starting on the other side here, and uh, so far so good. I'm into the next day, which this day was a short day. I also, so I, as I was saying, I get off track so bad because, like, not, this isn't when I edit these videos, mind you. I'm, I'm not. You know, this isn't written down or anything. I, I'm literally watching my videos as I talk about them. So that's that's how I do this, by the way. And um, <laughs> I'm just like, I just blab about anything that comes to my mind about the build but my goal is to have this car done not done done it's it's never going to be done but to have it running and, and and driving and stopping in a safe manner by spring i don't think that's an unrealistic goal i mean i wrapped up the floor today i mean i'm well it's not wrapped up i still have to do the toe kicks i'm leaving the toe kicks open for a while uh, you'll see there's a little gap above the toe kick uh, I have a lot to do there's a lot to do but to get it driving and stopping it shouldn't be a whole heck of a lot I think I can tackle that over the next like five months of some of winter you know it's the beginning of fall I still have all of fall and all of winter I should be able to do it but you know I could run into problems I could have some crazy catastrophe happen where I have to spend a lot of money on something else like life happens but that's just my goal that i'm going to try for if it doesn't happen i won't be you know disgusted with myself or anything i'll just you know it'll just push me even harder and then i'll set a new goal but ultimately like interior and everything like that like i'll probably start dialing that in you know at the same time because i don't want to come back in and do the floor like the carpeting and the dynamat later i, I want to do that before i install the seats so I'm thinking about doing like a brown or a tan interior and doing a black 
black body with some red accents. I think that those three colors will go nice together. Let me know what you think in the comments if you think I should go with, you know. I was originally going to do gray inside or do all black. But I think like a brown, I think a brown would look, would look nice with, you know, the black body and, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I might do some red accents on the dash, but probably not. I'll probably just do do black. I, I, I don't know. I haven't decided. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to do wood grain on the insides of the doors and everything. The original wood grain for the front doors, for the front doors are there. And then the rear, they're not doors, but just like the, the back of the car, I'm, I'm going to do wood grain. I still have to put sheet metal separating the trunk from the, from the, from the, uh, Oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind. From, from the inside of the car. <laughs> because I'm going to have my fuel cell back there in the battery. And if anything, if I get wrecked into or if there's a fire, I need to have a firewall back there. there. There's a lot. But yeah, see that space above the tow kick there? That's ultimately going to be... That's all that's going to be left to do. You know, after... Probably the next episode. I don't, I don't want to say that. I say that and then it won't get done if I jinx myself. But I'll, I'll move on to something else that's not even relevant to what we're watching right now. And also, by the way, I, I guess I should say, uh, giving away all my secrets here. I, uh, <laughs> they're not secrets at all, but I usually edit... Like, I'm usually like four videos ahead. So what you're seeing is like was filmed probably two weeks ago you know from from when from when you're from when you're seeing it it was done about two weeks ago and i'm probably way ahead on to something else by now or i'm taking a break i do that in case i run into problems and i need to take a break or something like that or i get into my other channel or something else or work is too heavy for a week and i, I can't work on it uh that's why I do that. I like to stay. If I filmed and then put my videos out that day, uh, it's kind of you know I like to I like to try to do them like anywhere from three to five days apart, a week at the most. So yeah, you're seeing a video like this video you're seeing was was done about two weeks ago, and obviously I'm editing it right after I did it so I have no idea what I'm what I'm into right now so you know I can't give you any spoilers for what's ahead because I, I don't know yet I just know that by the time you see this it's going to be two weeks from now <laughs> if that makes any kind of sense so yeah guys I mean it's just it's the exact same thing as the other side moving right along I have to keep taking breaths too here and there um, not at this point I I think I was right there I was just turning down the, the heat a little bit because sometimes I have to adjust the you know my settings but uh, when I start getting into the tunnel area it's like galvanized or some something i don't even know and it, and it has some of that it's like bed liner stuff on it and it's underneath it so uh it, it you know has undercoating under it so it it stinks real bad and it fills the whole car with smoke it's like deadly poisonous gases that you're, you're breathing in basically i mean none of this stuff's good to breathe in like i can't imagine i probably should be wearing a respirator but i figure i'm only going to be doing this like I don't do this very often. So yeah, that's 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 it for now. Um, I still have to finish her up, but it's a good start. You know, this is a floor part one basically, and I hope that anyone who was on the fence about it, I hope that this helps you to just make the jump and actually do it because it's really fun and uh, it's not that hard. So. Thanks for watching, and if you have any input, please leave a comment, and uh, stay tuned for the next one.